Hello, I'm Melinda Patterson and welcome to Community Pulse. Thank you for letting us into your home. We are going to talk to a wonderful woman in just a few minutes and share some valuable information about a program that she works with. I want to introduce to you today, I have Phyllis Clark. Thank you, Phyllis, for being here. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share my program with you. Thank you, and you are the founder and the CEO of Healthy Heritage, a health education and advocacy organization. Yes, yes. Right? That, in a nutshell, is a lot of work. It yes. is, it <laughs> is, it is. Tell me what it is. Mm -hmm. So what Healthy Heritage is, we actually take established mainstream uh, health care information mm -hmm. uh, from hospitals or from organizations like the American Cancer Society, the American Diabetes uh, um, Society. We actually take their information, we make it culturally relevant, and we take it directly to the community. We go to where the community is, such as barbershops, churches, beauty shops, parks, Wow. Yes. That's great. That's so you make the material, you put it in a format that's culturally sensitive yes. to that particular population. Yes. So it's a little more easier understood. Exactly. Exactly. Um, which is, we have found to be very successful mm -hmm. because um, sometimes the community's not available mm -hmm. during nine to five. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's have to be after hours. Sometimes it's on a Sunday. So it right. doesn't really meet always. It doesn't always meet the corporate standards or mm -hmm. availability. Mm -hmm. So Healthy Heritage really is the conduit or the bridge between the two. And we love that. We pride that ourselves on that. And that's wonderful because the guys have to go to the barber shop. Yes. The women do go to the beauty salon. Yes. So and they get the nails done and yes. all this stuff. So this is the perfect scenario for them. Perfect opportunity. Wow, that's um, great. One of the programs we work with is um, a diabetes screening mm -hmm. um, at least twice a year in 15 local Inland Empire barbershops. And I can screen anywhere. My um, health outreach workers can screen anywhere between 50 to 75 men in a course of a day. Now, wow. would you see that many African American men in a doctor's clinic no. in a day? No. 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 You would not. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And often I, um, on these uh, outings, I've found that this is the first time they've been exposed to any type of screening. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about the outcomes. So why, well I now I know why, but how did you start this Healthy Heritage? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, um, it's sort of, I consider it a calling mm -hmm. because my education and background really did not lead me here but a, a personal experience mm -hmm. I lost my mother when she was in her early 40s I had just hit 20 just got married just starting my career just you know just starting everything mm -hmm. that a young woman would want and then I was burying my mother mm -hmm. at that age and she died of colon cancer which is a preventable cancer right. with lifestyle changes and I knew nothing about it, nothing mm -hmm. about cancer. I felt helpless and losing my best friend, grieving for a long time about it and not understanding, you know, I was the only one that didn't have a mother around me. So I think that really impacted my life. And then I eventually started working with breast cancer survivors mm -hmm. in my career, my chosen career, which is the fashion industry. I worked for Nordstrom's and I started the prosthesis mm -hmm. um, department, which is out of lingerie. And I started working with breast cancer survivors and I grew um, just this immediate connection mm -hmm. with helping these women feel good about themselves after going through something so traumatic. And it just, one thing led to another, and I just decided, you know, I'm going to be the conduit for my community. I did not know um, the impact of chronic diseases in the African American community, and I want to I wanted be the one that, that helps, um, makes, makes the difference. So it kind of became a passion, actually. It is a passion. I consider it a passion, and I also consider it my ministry. Oh, it's very, it is a good way of ministry. Yes. It yes, really it is. is. Mm -hmm. Now, you've had a lot of successes. Yes, I have. Could you share maybe something mm -hmm. that's been very important to you that you remember? Yes, yes, I do. Well, my signature event, or our signature event, is the Healthy Heritage Cultural um, actually, it's the Healthy Heritage Conference. It's in its seventh year, so this July we'll have our seventh conference in mm -hmm. Riverside County. That's been a success because over almost a thousand community um, 
members come and have free screening, um, workshops, a lot of health education. I'm really, really proud of that. I, um, 2010, I was able to open the Healthy Heritage Cultural and Wellness Center Ooh. downtown Riverside. I'm really excited about that because we actually have, um, we hold a lot of health education mm -hmm. classes in this environment and again we strive to be cultural so the center is actually a, an art gallery i was pleased and happy to partner with charles bibbs who is yes. the renowned artist of mm -hmm. b graphics and so he's my art creator and he yeah. has he brings in a uh, show every three months a new show of contemporary african-american and latino artists and it's just beautiful. It's painted in warm oranges and um, uh, soft uh, kind of sunburst yellows. And we have spoken word there. Mm -hmm. We play jazz music, gospel music. It's kind of like a little art community, mm -hmm. but we also have health classes there. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm you're, really you're excited about that. What everybody loves. Yes. You yes. know, they're enjoying music, they're enjoying art, but at the same time, they're realizing information. Yes, yes. That could possibly save their life. Absolutely. Because if someone picks up the brochure about when they should have a colonoscopy. Yes. It might save their life. Exactly. And it's where they are. You know, mm -hmm. it's co they're coming for one reason, but they're picking up information mm -hmm. about their health, as mm -hmm. you said. And we have tend to separate our health with it's like your health is in this compart compartment and your life is in another compartment, mm -hmm. but your health is your life. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have good health, you can't sing, you can't dance, you can't appreciate art, you can't enjoy your family, you mm -hmm. can't worship, you can't do God's work. So it's really the platform. We can no longer ignore it and leave it up to someone else. We have to empower ourselves right. and be proactive about our health. Now, our time is almost up, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I do want to ask you, I know you partnered up with Charles Bibbs. Yes. And that's wonderful. Yes. But what, uh, who other people, what other people do you partner with? Okay, Healthy Heritage also has partners like uh, City of Hope, okay. the American Cancer Society, Loma Linda University um, Public Health, School of Public Health. We Great. work very closely with both uh, public health departments, Riverside County and San Bernardino County, mm -hmm. just to name a few. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we always are looking for other partners. Mm -hmm. uh, corporate partners can get involved with mm -hmm. us. Financial partners, looking for donators, uh, anyone that wants to support us financially. Mm -hmm. We also work with um, volunteers. Uh, individuals that are looking for community service hours or clinical hours. Mm -hmm. So there's an array of opportunities with Healthy Heritage. Sounds like there's a whole array of things that they can yes. do. So they can contact us. We're on Facebook. Healthy Heritage is on Facebook. Or they can call us directly at 951-389-4325. Okay, repeat the phone number again. 951-389-4325. Twenty-five. Very good. Thank you. Uh, you probably get some calls. I hope so. All Looking right. forward to meet some new people. Very good. You know, and this this is going to air and reach quite a few people. So Great. I'm pretty sure people need to understand that Phyllis Clark is doing something for them. Great. Looking yeah. forward to it. You've done a great job. Continue Thank you. it. Thank you so Thank much. You so Thank you much. for having me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, the time is up, Phyllis. I don't know where it went, but it is. Okay. Uh, Community Pulse. Great time. Thank you so much. It's been really wonderful that you've had us into your home, and uh, possibly we'll be right back. Thank you. Up to 40% of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov business. Full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. 
car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back. I'm Rolinda Patterson and this is Community Pulse. We had exciting guests earlier, but now we have another guest and we have Molina Medical here being represented by the wonderful Dr. Rafael Amaro. Hi. Thank you very much. Mucho gusto. How are you doing? Mucho gusto. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And you're the director of the Molina Medical. I'm the medical director of the Molina Medical Clinics uh, in California and a couple of other states. Oh, too, are so, you? Yeah, well, very yeah. good. Very good. Uh -huh. um, why is it so important to have a clinic of Molina Medical here in Rialto? Well, we think that it's in keeping with um, the mission of the founder, okay. which was uh, C. David Molina, who was a physician. Mm -hmm. who started uh, um, a group of clinics, first one and then a group, mm -hmm. uh, over 30 years ago, mm -hmm. working in the, uh, you might say, underserved or lower socioeconomic uh, area of, um, of Los Angeles, initially, uh, mm -hmm. Wilmington, California. And he was an emergency room physician, and he saw that there were a lot of folks who were coming to his emergency room that didn't have a primary care doctor, mm -hmm. uh, because primary care doctors wouldn't take Medi-Cal, for mm -hmm. example. And so he decided that he wanted to serve that community. And the company has been doing that ever since. And that leads us eventually here to Rialto, mm -hmm. where we think there's a need. We think that our community is there. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, uh, we've opened up uh, a clinic in Rialto. Good, very good. Yeah. It's exciting to have you here in Rialto. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's Welcome. great to be here. Where exactly is the location of your new clinic? We are right on uh, Foothill at 790 East Foothill in the city of Rialto. 790 East, East Foothill, Hill, right, mm -hmm. and it's in a uh, large shopping uh, center there, mm -hmm. and we're um, we have uh, one of the end uh, areas mm -hmm. of the shopping center. Nice, big, um, beautiful, clean mm -hmm. facility with a big Molina sign on it. Mm -hmm. So you can't I, miss I it. I think I drove by and saw it. I yeah, think it's yeah. Nice it's so we like to build that. our facilities, uh, you know, roomy, and uh, it's not really fancy inside, but it, it's very clean and. It's mm -hmm. got uh, all the equipment that we need, including some equipment that you don't find at most clinics. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the adaptive equipment for uh, folks with disabilities, mm -hmm. such as a scale um, for weighing patients that are on wheelchairs mm -hmm. uh, and uh, other items like that. Hoyer lifts for lifting patients. Mm -hmm. uh, also uh, exam tables mm -hmm. that are 14 inches from the ground, so you can lower the exam table. Somebody from a wheelchair can transfer right. over and Things it like that. Like so we're disabled, hmm. disabled, uh, culturally sensitive to this particular. Population. We do pay a lot of attention to that. We we also we do want to be uh, disabled friendly mm -hmm. and uh, also deaf and uh, and blind mm -hmm. uh, friendly and uh, of course also culturally sensitive. Right. So we have a lot of uh, different languages oh, that are. You? spoken in the clinic. Mm -hmm. Of course, most of our staff speak Spanish. Very good. Uh, but we also have services for other less, uh, you know, used mm -hmm. languages, but still present here in California. Mm -hmm. And uh, we avail ourselves of that for, for our patients that mm -hmm. come to see us. So sounds, sounds like a wonderful place. Yeah, we, we think so. We, we also have some things that we think are a little bit different than maybe other clinics. How now, different? Well, we, for example, we have a, what you might say is a, a babysitting service, a child care program. I, I heard that rumor. I was well, going to ask it, you about it's, it. <laughs> it's not open so, you know, for people to go shopping. It's uh, right, for right. when um, uh, a mom or a dad may bring, um, may go to the doctor and mm -hmm. they are doing child care duties mm -hmm. and they may, you know, not want to take the child into the examination right. room because they want to have private time with the right. provider, the doctor. and. And so we do have an area there with a qualified uh, super supervisor for child care and, and the patient can go ahead and, and uh, have the child remain there for you know, an hour or two, mm -hmm. whatever they need to, to finish whatever they need to do in the clinic. So we think that's a unique uh, sort of uh, thing. The other thing that we have is a, a community shuttle that goes between the clinic and various points out in the community. Uh, such as the uh, the supermarket, the bank, uh, the library, and uh, we seriously, yes, yeah, and that that runs every hour while the clinic is open, uh -huh. and uh, at no charge. And again, that's a again a Molina. It's got Molina symbols, uh, you know, on it, and uh, 
we, we're very proud of that service. We we have that at some of the other locations, and uh, so. Yeah. That's wonderful. It sounds like you're thinking about the whole family, not just bringing patients in. Yeah, it, it's a primary care oriented mm -hmm. um, clinic. We we want to be um, our patients' medical home. Mm -hmm. uh, we want them to come to us rather than seek treatment uh, in the emergency room, you know, for things that are oh, appropriate yeah. to be in a doctor's Absolutely. office. People shouldn't Absolutely. be going to the emergency room it's, for a sore it's, throat. It's or totally <laughs> abused yeah, in the and, emergency and room. And inconvenient. I mean, when you go to right. the emergency room and they see that you just have a sore throat, they, you know, you have to wait for eight to ten hours. Uh, a long period of time. Mm -hmm. and, and here we try to make our folks very comfortable. They can come in. We, we do have walk-in appointments, mm -hmm. so it's not all by a Appoint we, you know, we 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 like appointments because people need to come in for their, uh, you know, their pap smears and their physical exams. Mm -hmm. and, but we also do have walk-ins mm -hmm. um, the time, and uh, we think that's a very important function because uh, our our emergency rooms are impacted, especially mm -hmm. here, and uh, we think that this is the sort of thing that can lead to improvement in emergency room waiting times, making sure we handle simple everyday common stuff at the doctor's office. Right. So you do have also the needs met for those, since our population is Latino, mm -hmm. high population, you do have uh, the sensitivity issue covered by mm -hmm. having the interpreters. We have interpreters. We also have lots of Latino providers, mm -hmm. Spanish speakers, uh, both in terms of our medical assistants mm -hmm. and our doctors mm -hmm. and our nurse practitioners. Uh, in physician's assistants. We mm -hmm. have some Spanish speakers and a lot of Spanish speakers in those categories. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in this area, that's uh, as, as common a language as English, so. Right, yeah. right. We, we want to make sure that we meet that, that need and also that we're culturally sensitive to, mm -hmm. uh, to the different practices that people might, uh, you know, fears mm -hmm. that people might have about going to the doctor and uh, different cultures have different sure. issues, so we try to be sensitive sure. to Sure. What to type those. of patients do you generally see in a, any given day? Well, we uh, at uh, Molina, we basically see the full spectrum mm -hmm. from uh, little babies that have been recently delivered uh, all the way to, you know, people in their 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of the patients that we have at the Molina clinics are have Medi-Cal mm -hmm. um, insurance and uh, the majority of them have uh, uh, their coverage through Molina, mm -hmm. so it's Molina Medi-Cal, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the Medi-Cal patients, as you know, are children mm -hmm. uh, who just don't have any other kind of insurance coverage. Uh, their parents may not make enough to uh, buy regular insurance, and so they qualify for Medi-Cal, and uh, so a lot of children, a lot of young mothers, but we also have our share of folks that are um, have more chronic illnesses, uh, mm -hmm. hypertension, diabetes, uh, they may have um, a chronic disability, possibly because mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, diseases have uh, you know piled up. Right. And, yeah. So we we see a complete mix of uh, all the way, like I said, from little kids to to older adults. And we we also see Medicare mm -hmm. um, in our offices. Uh, Medicare, both Medicare um, Molina uh, Health Plan and Medicare Fee for Service. So people yeah. can buy Molina Healthcare. Uh, in order to buy Molina Healthcare Medi-Cal, you, you have to actually qualify for Medi-Cal first. first. So you, you, and actually we do have people uh, on site and also available by telephone who can explain to mm -hmm. someone who might walk in off the street, well, you know, do I qualify for Medi-Cal? Am mm -hmm. I likely to qualify? Oh, and we can I put see. them in touch with the right uh, resources mm -hmm. so that they can find out if this is a uh, coverage Mm -hmm. that's available uh, for them. So you don't actually buy it. I uh, see, you, you, I see. It, It's a benefit that comes through the, through the state. Uh, and on the other hand, um, we do have Medicare plan mm -hmm. that people who have Medicare can make a choice. They can actively choose to, 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 be, to be with the Molina uh, mm -hmm. to receive their, their Medicare right. through. So. so people that qualify for Medicare or qualify for Medi-Cal, they can go to Molina and they are helped with the resources absolutely to uh, be eligible to the Molina Health Plan. Right, to make okay. the determination, to I help see. them, to put them in touch with the people who can help them make right. the determination and show them how, what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's a lot of folks who um, actually qualify for, uh, qualify for Medi-Cal mm -hmm. and another program called Healthy Families, oh. which is for families that are 
make a little bit more income than but the not medic, quite but enough. not quite enough to be right. able to buy their own and they qualify uh, the children do for something called healthy families Good. and uh, and a lot of folks don't know that they qualify mm -hmm. so our staff can help them uh, directly or put them in touch with folks who, mm -hmm. who can't okay. you know. Sounds like a great program. We we think that uh, that it's a good operation, mm -hmm. and you know, we're proud uh, of uh, the doctors and other providers that we mm -hmm. recruit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes a special kind of um, provider, doctor, I think, to mm -hmm. you know to work in in the setting that that we work in. Uh, and you you need a certain sense of mission. I don't mm -hmm. want to brag too much about our providers, but you know it, it's folks who brag. Brag. Okay, it's okay. Well, Go ahead. I, I think it's people who made a commitment to work with mm -hmm. this community and who like working with people who, you know, who have the, the need mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, may not necessarily be interested in driving the fanciest car or anything, right. but you know, like to actually the mission, the work, mm -hmm. and uh, that's who we try to hire. So, so tell me, uh, if you don't mind me asking you, Dr. Amaro, why did you become a doctor? Well, you know, I became a doctor. I think I got inspired by uh, a family uh, uh, friend mm -hmm. who, uh, who my my folks knew, who who was a pediatrician, mm -hmm. and actually um, had a chance when I was quite young, uh, you know, before really I was a teenager, early teens, to do just kind of go help in the office, mm -hmm. and I, I got uh, inspired, inspired, you know, that way. Absolutely. So I, you know, I like the idea of telling young people. You know, career day right. and, and bringing young people to the office, and because I think at that, that it really does generate a lot of inspiration Absolutely. in young kids. I, I don't think necessarily we can tell what's going on mm -hmm. in their little heads at that mm -hmm. age, but you know, I think it, the seed it, was planted. The, the seed was planted. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, that's and what it, it was. sounds like most of your doctors have that seed planted as well. I think a lot of uh, most of the providers that, that we hire, I'm, everybody I'd have to say is someone who who's got the mission, who's driven by that sense of Very mission. Very good. Yeah. Now. Our time is up, believe it or not. Oh, my goodness. Yes, okay. it is. Well, it's been great being it's with been you. It's been great here. talking Relinda. to you. Tell me, uh, before we close, leave our viewers with a thought. Well, just uh, make sure that you get your preventive care, mm -hmm. that you uh, get your vaccines, uh, that you go to your doctor, get your blood pressure checked, mm -hmm. and, uh, and stay healthy. And if they need an appointment? If they need an appointment, they can call our uh, medical group and let mm -hmm. me, if I can. Please, uh, please. Cheat here a little bit. It's 909-546-7195. 909-546-7195. And we just got the phone number, so I need, that's why I need to look at it. So. <laughs> it's okay. You can cheat. All right. Very good. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much, you Amanda. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're wonderful. wonderful. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. And we're proud Molina Medical is here in the city of Rialto. Well, we're very happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Community Pulse, Molina Medical is in town. You heard the number. If you need an appointment, give them a call. All right, until next time, I'm Erlinda Patterson. This is your program, Community Pulse. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.